every month, every week, are new to the CFC. And I bet there's a bunch of people in here today that are new to the CFC and are thinking, gosh, I, you know, everybody else has been doing this for five or 10 years and I'm brand new. The fact is of the 5,000 charities that we work with every year, about 40% of them have a new contact to the CFC. I've done three of these trainings already this week. So any question that you ask me or Antonia or Jen in the chat directly via email is absolutely been asked earlier this week and will be asked later today and will be asked tomorrow. So please, if you have a question, um, don't hesitate to ask um, it, put it in the chat. Um, well, Peggy, if you've been doing 35 years of the combined federal campaign, then I'm going to have you do this training, okay? Because I thought mine was 33 years and I thought I held the record. So congratulations, 1989, you've been doing this since. So that's wonderful. Um, so everybody uh, new to the CFC with this organization, new, Lacey is Judy's second year, um, and that zero CFC experience. We had somebody yesterday that had just been tasked this about three weeks ago. So uh, my point is, I have some slides here. You're seeing them right now. I'm going to go through this because you can't have a presentation without slides, right? You have to have a Zoom call. You got to do slides. And I'm going to jump back and forth between the slides to keep me on track and to keep us make sure we cover the things that we want to cover. But I'll go a lot to both the Give CFC site and then also refer to your account at CFC Charities. So make sure, especially if you're new, and this has been handed off to you in the last month, six months, that you have access to your account at cfccharities.opm.gov. If you don't, put it in the chat that you don't have access. Where you want to go is go to uh, CFC Charities, go to contact us, give them a call at customer care, and they will help you get access to your account. There's some hoops that you have to jump through if you don't have access, but that's all about security protocols because the combined federal campaign is the only system, this system, this donate system, is the only system that's accessed by all 4 million federal employees. The only federal government system that is accessed by all 4 million federal employees. So, security is job one. Thank you again for joining us. We're gonna get started. Today, we're gonna to talk about how the CFC works, this year's theme and the materials, marketing, and then we're gonna jump, probably we're gonna flip those two. We're gonna do CFC events and then do marketing. The combined federal campaign requires an application, which you all completed. And with that application gives you the opportunity to engage federal employees at their workplace campaign. This is your only opportunity to engage federal employees, all 4 million of them at work. And you do that primarily by listing in the campaign, donors go here to click donate, and then they find your organization here. So you can follow along independently. They'll do a search and they will find the organizations in the campaign and your engagement, your initial engagement and your 24 seven engagement with federal employees is your listing right here. I guess I should go back, find a charity, select a state, and select the wonderful state of Texas, all charities that are in Texas. And you have this list of Texas charities. So that's how um, the listing works. That's how you generally connect with federal employees by listing putting your statement, your name, your website in a pop-up window, and your, um, and your logo. That's the primary engagement with federal employees. So check that, make sure you have that, because we're gonna refer to this, we're gonna refer to your CFC number a lot when you engage with federal employees. So make sure that you've checked out your listing for this year, and if you have any questions, let us know. We want to stop here for a moment and thank you for participating in the CFC and partnering with us because 
your work. We love the barn cats, don't we, Jen? Um, Antonio, we love the barn cats. Your work is what inspires us, federal employee volunteers, and the donors for the past 63 years. CFC's charities have made this tradition of CFC uh, federal employee generosity and community building uh, a central part of their um, annual uh, year. So thank you, thank you for what you do and thank you for partnering with us. The campaign starts, anybody know when the campaign starts, what the kickoff date is? You can put it in the chat if you want, you can raise your hand. Starts on September 30th. Jen, how come we don't do any training on September? Uh, well, it's fiscal year end uh, for the government. Uh, the federal government's fiscal year end is September 30th. So by regu regulation, the campaign operates one September through 15 January. However, to Mike's point, the campaign really doesn't get started until actually, in my opinion, the Tuesday after Indigenous Peoples Day, in that uh, they come back from the holiday, the federal employees do, and that's really when they start uh, hosting events, inviting charities to events, et cetera, because again, September is fiscal year end. So we we utilize September and early October to train our volunteers. And uh, we have about 2,000 federal employees across the 21 zones that we manage that we have been training, actively training um, providing them materials and educating them on the importance of hosting events and inviting you to them. So they have been trained and they are actively right now requesting charities to attend events between now and all the way through January 15th, because that is the campaign season. And Tony, you said something before we started about USPS in, Fort Worth, in, in Dallas. Yes, if you are a North Texas CFC charity, um, U.S. Postal in Dallas is one of the top uh, postal, it is the top postal account in the entire country, um, and they do a lot of events. They will host probably about 70 events, uh, 70 to 80 events throughout campaign season, and I just received their first list of events, um, and they will be starting next week, so there will be lots of event requests coming through, uh, event invitations coming through, so if you are in North Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, area, uh, please be prepared. Um, if you are able to attend any postal events, they will be coming through very fast and furious. Yeah, so and, I, and I do want to add also a couple points to that um, because North Texas is unique when it comes to the U.S. Postal uh, Service in that the um, Texas District 1 is what they're called in North Texas, is the most successful postal district in the entire country for CFC. They um, outraise contributions for even national capital areas campaign. They are number one in the country. They have a team of volunteers that go to every single station. Every single station, they show up and they make that ask. It's incredible what they do. You guys have a remarkable team in the Dallas, Fort Worth area. And unfortunately, with that comes very tight turnarounds. Uh, we do train our charities, or our federal employees. We encourage them to give at least two weeks notice when they're scheduling their events because they got to promote and publicize. Postal is unique. They're not promoting and publicizing events because when they go into a station, they're just going in for 15, 20 minutes, passing out pledge forms. You get five, 10 minutes to speak, you know, to that, to that group of letter carriers or what have you behind the behind the wall. And it's, I mean, it's just to swallow repeat for them. It's not your typical charity fair event. You're going to show up with some, you know, things in your hands to pass out and you're going to get an opportunity to speak, but they're very quick turnaround. So please be patient with us. If you get invited to a postal event and it's, you know, 24, 72 hours notice, understand that's just how they work. That is their battle rhythm. And so we do the best we can to support them with how they operate. They are not a typical agency, and we are super excited to be receiving their list because there will be lots of events, and again, they raise a lot of money. So if you get the opportunity to attend and support them, thank you for that. We appreciate it. The advantages of CFC participation include reaching 4 million federal employees. When you look at your pledges, you're going to see pledges that not only come from South Central Texas or Texas Gulf Coast or 
North Texas, but you'll see pledges from all over the country because people will have born and raised in San Antonio, but now live in Seattle, born and raised in Houston, and now are in um, uh, National Capital Area, and they want to give back to the Houston SBCA or uh, the San Antonio Food Bank. So you receive money from across the country. You receive money throughout the year because these are payroll deduction pledges. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but these pledges and this campaign takes place in the fall. 95% of the gifts are payroll deduction pledges, which means you're going to get a list. We're going to show you that, what it looks like, and, and you're going to see how much your pledges, your total pledges were for the 2024-2023 campaign. It's a pledge amount, not dollars collected. And the dollars collected start in January and run all the way through January, February, March, April, May, all the way through every payroll allotment period in the federal government for the calendar year 2024. So you'll receive disbursements from May, in May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March of 2026 for this 2024 campaign. You get to track your pledges online and volunteers, federal employees can even volunteer hours. The theme this year is Give Happy. It's the same theme as last year. The important distinction is that the campaign listened to you when you said, hey, you know, my program isn't happy. You know, cancer isn't happy. Homelessness isn't happy. So they came up with what they call impact words to adjust that, allow you to adjust it so you can give hope, you can give stability, you can give opportunity, you can give support, you can give shelter. And they integrated that into the cause weeks. Remember last year and most year, January, or sorry, uh, September 15th would have a cause week, animal support, you know, October 15th would be uh, education, uh, November, week of November 11th was always uh, veteran support because that's Veterans Day. Well, what they did this year is allow cause areas to be used and didn't campaign wide have a cause week and they allow federal employee coordinators, our volunteers to choose what week they wanna have animal welfare week or what week they wanna have children and family support. Because you might have, you know, the uh, SBA in San Antonio and they might wanna have a four week campaign. They might wanna start on Giving Tuesday and end by December. And they wanna have in that week, in those four weeks, it doesn't happen all the time, but this is the way a lot of, especially DOD installations do it. They want to have a beginning and an ending period. They don't run with the campaign September 1 through <clears throat> January 15th. And so they'll pick four areas. They'll pick disaster response, education, uh, environmental protection, food and nutrition. Those will be their four weeks. And they will design their campaign around that. And you also will have, and we have a sample timeline that they can use and that we use to help those that have the full complement of weeks and cause areas and they want to use that and get the messages out. Uh, we'll use this sample timeline. Why do you have cause areas? You don't go, I mean, you guys know this, when you do your own in-house solicitations, it's, it's not uh, give to barn cats, give to barn cats, give to barn cats. You're changing up what it is that you want to emphasize depending on um, uh, the 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 um, part of the program that you want to support, and we know federal employee donors support different causes, and so the CFC goes out every week to remind them that every cause is covered in the combined federal campaign. Pick your cause, find your charity, and give through the CFC. So that's what cause areas are for. You get to pick cause areas, and we'll talk about that a little bit when we show the. Uh, events registrations. There's a charity engagement guide that I want you all to download and review. I'm going to put the link here um, and I'll put it in the chat. Oh, I don't know if that worked. It should have worked. Click on that. That should take you right there. So um, this charity engagement guide is an excellent read for you. It's pretty text heavy, which me and Jen and Antonio aren't crazy about. 
Um, you send me an email with this much text and I probably won't read it, but take some time, look at the engagement. It's only nine pages and get some ideas of what you can do, can't do, um, how to make a video. If you're gonna upload a video to the virtual charity fair, which we'll talk about in a minute, how to market yourself, promote your CFC involvement. And understand that um, these are the primary methods that historically we know work in the CFC, but your number one way to support your organization and get questions answered and think about how to market yourself is to contact your area director, contact Antonia and say, hey, Antonia, I'm going to go to the Dallas USPS kickoff. What should I bring? And Antonia or Colton or whoever your account manager is will get back to you with some ideas on how to present yourself to uh, the folks at the CFC if you get an opportunity. But the number one thing you want to do, the number one takeaway from today's event is getting access to your account at CFC Charities and looking at this page. So when you get access to your account at CFC Charities, this has historical data for your organization since 2017 if you've been in the campaign. We don't care right now about the application section. We don't care right now about the listing section, okay? Those will be covered in December of this year for applications in June of next year. What you wanna look at is your pledge and you wanna click on view over here to get to this page because this page has two blue buttons and those blue buttons on the left give you detail from every gift that you receive through the CFC. On the right gives you the information from every federal employee donor that has given to your organization since 2017 and release their name. About 20% of, of the donors release their name. It's a key marketing factor for the campaign that donors are allowed anonymity. So as much as you would like 100% of donors to release their name. The campaign and the donors value anonymity. And so that's not gonna change. But the ones that did release their names, thank them this week, thank them next week. The campaign is just getting going. Go back to 2017 and listen, if it's a 2017 email, use it. My brother's been a US Marine for 30 years, he has that same dang Yahoo address. And every federal employee and every DOD employee is gonna have that same email address. And heck, if they retired, they're gonna have the same email address. And retiree giving is the number one growing sector in the combined federal campaign. Thank them, remind them that they've given to you and give them examples of what CFC revenue has helped your organization do each year, thanks to the generosity of federal employees and retirees. There are three big spikes in campaign giving every year, and it's when the Office of Personnel Management sends out its email to all the donors that gave last year. They send out reminders three times early in the campaign season to remind donors that the campaign has started, around Giving Tuesday, and then at the end of the campaign. So if you wanna see a spike in giving, put those three communications on your to-do list. Do it now, do it around Giving Tuesday, and I know, I know you guys have plenty of stuff to do on Giving Tuesday, but this is, as Jen says, a chew, swallow, repeat, same message, Federal employees give, that's the biggest day of giving, Giving Tuesday. The biggest week of giving is the final week of the year. You want to be part of that, put that on your calendar, and that's the major marketing that you do. And when you put together that message, make sure you go to how, again, we're going back to Give CFC, we click Charities, we click on Promote Yourself, and everything that you need. There's a messaging document that tells you what to include when you're talking to federal employees about giving to the CFC. There's the CFC logo. There's the Give Happy logo. There's a QR code where people can just shoot, or you can give them a link 
directly here, and that's what I recommend that you do. Give them a link, and and it works. So Jen, I'm gonna turn it over to you to, to do your favorite vet ticks and show people how marketing yourself in the CFC, one of the real um, success stories in the campaign is, is an organization called Vet Ticks that has been crushing it in the CFC because they've been promoting their participation. They've been using the logo. They've been using Give Happy. They've been using their CFC code. They've been using the CFC uh, imprimatur as a recognition of what a trusted and recognized organization they are. You're muted. Thank you. Gotta love those um, virtual etiquette um, best practices. So, all right, thanks, Mike. Um, can you see my screen all right? Okay, thank you. So um, yeah, marketing yourself in the CFC is so important. You guys went through the process of applying to the CFC. You got approved. Um, maybe you had to go through the appeal process because something was overlooked and that's also kind of strenuous. Uh, it's, it's a pretty strenuous process in general to get um, you know, through the application process with the combined federal campaign. We, we appreciate that. And you did that, you completed it. Congratulations, you're approved. Um, now it's equally as important that you help to promote your organization's participation in the campaign, recognizing that the federal government is our nation's number one largest employer. It is the largest employer in our country. And so chances are that however you are already communicating with your community, with your donors or potential donors, whether that's your website, your newsletters, billboards, social media, think about where you're marketing your organization, how you're um, publicizing and promoting your organization in the community, and just make sure that CFC is sprinkled in there. When you come to the Promote Yourself page, you can see that the logo is here. You can download the CFC logo. That's the star that says CFC. Putting that on your website, putting that on your social media page, in your newsletter is a very easy way to let federal employees know that you're in their campaign because they're seeing you. Again, they're our largest employer. They're seeing your organization. And when they see that, they say, oh, I can give to them through my combined federal campaign. I can use payroll deduction. It's a very easy way to let them know that you are on their list is simply by downloading that logo and making sure you have it anywhere and everywhere that you are already promoting your organization. So definitely make sure that you are doing that. <clears throat> also, um, to Mike's point, I'll jump over here to the VetTix um, organization. VetTix is a nonprofit that's in the CFC. When you go to their website, so I like to, I don't know about you guys as as, as uh, learners, you know, we're always learning. I like to see stuff in action. I like to see application. Like, how are they doing it? Show me what this looks like so I can get it right. Because chances are, as a nonprofit, you're doing a lot with a little, right? You don't have a big staff or um, a big IT department to help you uh, make things happen. So it's just you. And so seeing how things are being done successfully um, is very beneficial to us so that we don't spin our wheels. When you come to their website at the bottom, this is pretty common on most nonprofit pages, you see the seals, right? Whether that's their you know, best in America, their state registration seal, their CFC seal, right? So they've got the CFC code and very cool. They've incorporated their CFC number into that. You should always incorporate your number because that's how donors give to you. If they just see CFC, that's great, but by providing them that number, you're giving them the information they need to make that gift to your organization. So make sure you're incorporating that. I like how they put in parentheses also how long they've been involved with CFC, which is cool. But even cooler is that this logo is a link. When you click on it, they bring you to a page where they actually show and provide the um, donor or the, the person visiting their site instructions on how to give to them. They take them straight to their to their giving site. They help them understand how to complete their account if they haven't already. They show them how to search for them, add them to the basket, and check out. 
And so they've really made it easy on the donor to not only know their code, not only to acknowledge that they're in the CFC, what their code is, but also showing them, you know, how to give to their organization. They they've put it all in one spot. So um, that said, since VetTix started doing this, so they do this on their website. They have um, regular posts on their social media that they do, uh, newsletters, and um, I've come into the understanding that they're using text communications as well. Um, they're texting donors about their participation in CFC. Um, that's a, that's something they just started last year. Since they have started doing these just simple things over the last four years of promoting their organization in the CFC, their contributions have doubled every single year. So, and I'm just hypothetically 5,000 the first year, 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, right? Like in four years, they've 400% increase their, their contributions because they're promoting themselves. You know, we absolutely are doing the best we can to promote and publicize you guys um, in the campaign. There's 5,000 of you. And I have 2,000 volunteers that I have to train and support and get materials and manage those accounts, encouraging those coordinators to have events and to have successful campaigns. It's a pretty big lift for my team. So you know, you guys went through the process of applying and, and putting the work in to be a part of this campaign. Please make sure that you are promoting yourself where possible um, in the program. And in fact, Antonia, I don't know if you've dropped them in yet. Maybe you can do this as I navigate over. Another thing I'll show you guys as well is on social media, when you go to Facebook, for the 21 zones we manage, we have a Facebook page for every single one of the zones. Uh, many of you guys, this is Southern, right? So it's um, North Texas, Oklahoma is at the table, I believe, Antonia, um, South Central and Texas Gulf Coast, right? So that's the, those are the organizations. So Antonia is going to drop into the chat the links for um, your pages. The pages are all pretty consistent in that um, it's a lot of the same posting. We have a, a you know, a tool we use to post um, on the pages. But when you come to uh, North Texas, for example, and you look at it, you'll see that we are posting. So 15 hours ago, we made a post about conservation. If your organization has anything to do with the environment, you should come here, click share, quick post, our organization, you know, uh, tag your own organization, CFC code 12345 supports the environment. Whether you give to us or any other environmental cause. Thank you for using CFC as your pathway for giving and share that uh, post. Tag North Texas CFC as well. Make sure you include your code. Always promote that code. But we've created posts for you. You can see here in our photos, there's lots of posts that exist out here. There's volunteer ones. You can go back and grab any one of them and share them. They're all shareable. We've done the work. We've created the content. All you have to do is share it. And that helps again to promote and publicize uh, your organization, because again, I guarantee you federal employees are probably following your page. And when they see that you're in the CFC, they're going to go, oh, I can support them through my workplace giving campaign. Um, and so anytime you tag the uh, the zone, it does show up on our mentions page as well. Uh, so you'll see, um, like in the case of this organization, it looks like they've got um, a scholarship one that they've mentioned. See the the challenge here. Oh, there's their code. So you're, I'm always looking for like, did, did they put their code in there? What do they have? Do they have a visual? Do they have their code listed? Um, federal executive board. So feel free to again. I, again, I like to go and see what people are already doing. So if you want to see examples of what organizations are saying, it's under the mentions tabs um, of a page. But please go out there, like the page today, and um, help by sharing the posts promoting your organization specifically when you share them uh, so that people that are following your pages are aware of your participation in the CFC this year. Thanks, Jen. Sure. I'm going to pause for a minute before we jump over to CFC events to see if anybody has any questions about what we've covered so far. You can raise your hand if you want to unmute your organization and ask a question. Any newcomers, anything in the chat? I think we're, we're caught up. Um, remember, um, 
there is that opportunity to submit information to the virtual charity fair. The virtual charity fair is the opportunity for, for participating charities to upload videos. Um, and um, pictures and stories for your organization so federal employees can get more than just your statement, your logo, and then a link to your website. So check that out. Um, if you've already uploaded this in the past, you can upload the same video again. Um, if you want examples, this is a good one. I like this one, this is really good, Merced. Um, they have a picture, they have a story, and they have a video, and it all goes into using the website and the opportunity to market your organization to federal employees. It incre increases it, advances it, and is, is an excellent idea. CFC events, we talked about it at the beginning, and we're going to go through it again. Has everybody, with my invitation, everybody was encouraged to go and register? Has everybody that wants to register with the CFC gone through, gone to this site, and then clicked this link right here? So you go to Give CFC, you click Charities, for Charities, and Participating in CFC Events. Click that, and then click Register. Has everybody done that that wants to do it? Does anybody have any questions? And once you've registered, has everybody received their confirmation notice? It's an email that shows what you submitted, what your answers were to each question, because when you register, there's a lot of hoops. There's a lot of fields and you got to put in your charity name, CFC number, your name, your email, this is, goes back to the cause weeks. If you will stick with barn um, cats, you know, animal charity, and that's probably their only, um, you know, uh, cause week. Maybe you could talk about environmental protection, but most organizations are just going to, everybody's going to have one. Some will have two, very few will have three. If you want to do English and Spanish and you're a local charity and you pick your zone, so important so important to get this right. So if you didn't get, and I know Jen put it in there, there was a email that came from notifications at cognitoforms.com. Yes, absolutely. That went into your junk mail. There's no way you guys whitelisted cognitoforms.com up to this point. Didn't come from CFC, didn't come from charities. It came from notifications at Cognito Forms. And Antonio will type that in. The, so check that, check your junk mail, and make sure that you did everything correctly. So there is, let's see, did I, in-person and virtual events. And then you click the right zone or uh, uh uh, counties that you can attend. What a lot of people do is they click, okay, I want to go to local events. I want to go to in-person events. And if I'm in Dallas, help me out, Jen, help me out, Antonio, what would be the counties that you definitely want to go to? So you definitely go to Dallas, Tarrant, Benton, Cook. So you Parker. definitely want to click Denton, Oops, you want to click Denton, you want to click Coke? No, no. Cook. Cook. Colin, Colin. Colin. Yeah. And Dr. that's not too far to travel. And what too many, too many organizations have done is they've gone on and say, well, I'm in Denton County, so I'm just going to click Denton and think that they're going to get invited to the ones that are in Cook or in Colin or in the metropolitan area and you're not and we need you to if you'll travel there we want you at events um and you know like antonia said usps has 70 events coming lots of charities needed at usps locations installations distribution 
um, uh, points across um, North Texas. And if you can be there, we want you there. Yeah, Antonio. And I just wanted to add that there is no separation um, within this uh, registration between virtual or in-person events. Um, so if you're registering only for the counties um, that you can attend in-person events for, if there are virtual events in any of the other counties, um, those you will not receive those invitations. So um, we definitely want to make sure that you are able to receive any and all events that uh, you are able to attend, whether virtual or in-person. So I just clicking, put a note in the um, in all uh, counties might be a good idea because if you don't, you're not going to get these invites, um, and you're not going to be able to attend these virtual events. Is that what you're saying, Antonia? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I suggest. I mean, you can always decline, right? So the the most important thing though is that when you get these RS these event invitations, please be responsive to them. Don't mm -hmm. just look at them and say I can't go and not do anything. Please decline. Because when you decline, it it triggers the system to invite another charity. If you don't decline or accept, it's waiting for you because it wants to give you the opportunity. So please be responsive. If it's too far to travel, that's fine. Decline it. Or if you're not available, decline it, right? Just make sure that you're responsive to that invitation as soon as it comes in so that other charities can have an opportunity to attend um, if you're not able to. So this is what the RS, this is what the invite will look like. And, and, you know, important component to this is if you're invited to a DOD installation, it's going to be a little higher, but any federal building has security and you need to allow for that. Usually on the invite, it's going to have details of what the security steps are. So if it's an 11 o'clock start and you show up at five till you're going to be late. You're going to have to go through security. If you're a guy, you're going to be walking in, putting on your shoes, putting your belt on. And, and you're going to be late. And so get there early, get to know, set up your table, get to know the host and um, enjoy the event. Um, it's, it's, it's you, your programs, the services you provide to the community that inspire your outreach coordinator, your volunteers at, in the federal government and the donors. Um, great to bring giveaways, you know, we're talking pens, chip clips, whatever you have to promote your organization. Um, you cannot solicit. So don't put a pledge card or you can put a CFC pledge card, but don't solicit federal employees to give to you directly through your website. Quickest way to get banned from events and, and, and sanctioned by the CFC. You encourage giving at CFC events through the CFC. And a pro tip, and this is always great in October for events, but it works throughout December and, and November, bring candy. You put a bowl of candy on your, <laughs> on your table, somebody's gonna stop by, they're gonna grab a handful um, of, of whatever candy. We had a big discussion yesterday about candy corn and I still can't figure out what nerd candy corn is, but I'll, I gotta follow up with somebody on that. I, it doesn't, it makes my teeth hurt. Um, <laughs> So bring those, they'll stop by, they'll talk to you because they're gonna grab a handful of your Halloween candy or Christmas candy or whatever you have for Thanksgiving. So take advantage of that, support the campaign. This is a great way to engage federal employees. Do not, do not cancel the last minute, okay? I know things happen, life happens, but, but there's nothing that is more debilitating for a campaign volunteer, for your outreach coordinator, for the event overall, if we hear the day of that, oh, uh, got another Zoom call, I gotta jump on, I can't make it to the event. Um, uh, sure, family gets sick, can't go to school, can't find um, daycare, I understand that, but please don't, don't cancel because there's another charity out there that would have been able to attend. So it's, if you can't attend because of a, a serious conflict, please let the campaign know at ASAP and we'll, we'll try to find somebody to fill your spot. You are able to edit your choices, Andrea, but you have to do it through that notifications at, and I'm so glad you, you found that, that confirmation, the notifications at Cognito Forms, and then send your changes, reply to forward that email to uh, CFC support at charity.org. 
and then include the changes. And I just received my, you know, a training. I, I didn't, I didn't actually fill it out correctly. Now that I understand it, I want you to update X, Y, and Z to A, B, and C, um, and do that today. They will make the update directly. Ask them for a confirmation email that the updates have been made um, because the system is a little clunky, cumbersome. Ask for a lot of information that um, if you don't get it right, you won't get invited. And that's why we're having this training. That's why we train in October because we see how the systems open up, evolve, and we want to train on real time how these systems work. So uh, absolutely, Andrea, you can. And um, let us know if you have any problems. We've talked about events. We've talked about what you need to do to um, complete and succeed uh, at the events. And uh, we have about 15 minutes left. So we're going to wrap it up here and, and open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions. Um, I want to thank you all for attending. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Antonia. Um, we will do another training probably in November. We do them monthly during the campaign. Um, just so you know, uh, the team, your CFC team got together. The campaign's up this year across the country, about 12%. It's up and growing. A week ago, it was up 9%. So that's really good news. Um, individual zones and campaigns and results by by charity you know won't reflect that but we're only at about 10 percent 60 percent of the campaign six zero is raised on giving tuesday and afterwards what you're doing now and you all know this word because you guys are professional marketers we're making impressions we're sending out notices. We're reminding donors that they can give, they can give to the CFC. They've given to you before through the CFC, that you're in the CFC. So when they grab that post-it note off their computer that says, you know, oh, I got to give to the CFC and it's giving Tuesday or it's during the holidays, they remember you, they, re they know your CFC number and that impression, that series of impressions has worked. Yeah, Jen. Mute. That mute button, thank you. Um, so we had a couple of questions in the chat. There was um, uh, somebody asked about editing uh, their selections, what they had selected when they registered originally. They wanna make some changes and Antonia did drop the email in there, CFC support at charity.org. If you wanna make any changes to your event registration, if you did not get that confirmation email, if you have any questions about that system, the contractor that manages it, you'll have to contact them. The email is CFC support at charity.org. So please contact them directly. We cannot modify um, that information in the system for you. You do have to go through them. And then the question came up as to whether or not, um, you know, sometimes charities do apply to CFC and then they lapse and they come back. Um, usually it's um, the person that applied for the program for the organization left nonprofit turnover is real, as we know. And so they just missed a year and then they're like, oh no, and they come back the next year, right? Um, federal employees can only give to current approved charities. So the 2024 CFC approved charities are the only ones they can select at this time. Um, they cannot select ones that have been listed previously in the campaign. And it does happen occasionally. It's not that it's not common, but occasionally nonprofits lose their IRS status, their status with the IRS, right? Their 501c3 status. And when that happens, OPM is aware because they're connected to the IRS master file database. Um, payments do stop. They do not continue to be paid to the organization when you lose your status. Um, so just to be aware of that, keeping your status current is very important as well for your, uh, receiving the payments. And then, um, um, then the question was also, um, you know, who can, who can you reach out to about, uh, with additional questions? And I provided Mike, yours and Antonia's email. Antonia is the area director, uh, for the states that you guys are uh, participating in at the local level. Uh, and so she is a year round support person for both federal employees and nonprofits that you'll hear from. 
Uh, she does have somebody else on her team, Noemi Gonzalez, that you might hear from from time to time or possibly that might make phone calls to you as well. Um, we have some support staff that sometimes reaches out as well. Um, and so we do have year-round support. So if you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to email or, or reach out to us. And probably a good idea to put on your calendar, December 1st, it'll be time to apply for the 2025 campaign right around the corner. So um, the site will open for applications. Not that we're doing that right now, as Mike said earlier, uh, but it will be here before we know it. Uh, you'll want to get your applications in in December. So mark your calendars for getting the 2025 campaign applications submitted. Thanks, Jen. Like I said, we will have a November training to go over CFC status middle of November prior to Giving Tuesday. And then we also have a November or a December uh, campaign update and application review. And then a January uh, after the campaign closes on January 15th, we go straight into application review and help make sure that you get your 2025 application done. It's due on January 30th, but we're not talking about that now. Talking about 2024 CFC. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, it's been it's been great. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you, Jen. Sure, and we will send out the recording. As uh, Courtney Plackey was not able to join this session, um, her email CFC admin at mpma.com. She will send uh, a thank you to you guys with the link to the recording after it's done downloading, um, including the engagement guide uh, that we dropped into the chat, of course, earlier, so that you have that to reference. Um, as well post training. So you will have this to look back on. And if you need anything, let us know. Um, thank you for saying yes to CFC, for coming alongside of us, um, helping to support your organization, promote your organization this fall with us. We are so grateful for that. And most importantly, thank you for what you do, the communities and the populations you serve. Because of you, the world is a better place. So thank you guys, each of you, for what you're doing. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Bye. Back on a great CFC. Bye-bye.